Good morning everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. This morning we're starting off in my kitchen. We have been having the best weather. It is about mid-February, early to mid-February right now, and our last frost date is March 1st. So we're like two, three weeks away from our last frost date. So I've been keeping an eye on the weather and it's, it's, it's ridiculously beautiful. Uh, you know, it's kind of worrisome because in California, we always deal with droughts and this is obviously gonna be a drought year, so that's something that we're gonna have to deal with. Um, but if you look at the temperatures, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed that there's no rain in the forecast, but then I'm also like kind of happy because then I get to get, get out and garden a lot. <laughs> and um, one of the projects that I've been waiting to do because it is temperature sensitive is uh, put out my mason bees. So if you guys have never heard of mason bees, mason bees are, um, they're solitary bees. So normal honeybees, you know, they're in their beehives and there's like thousands of them and all that kind of stuff. And mason bees, there's only one and every female is a queen and so every female lays eggs and um, they actually do the work of uh, I've you know I've read different uh, estimates but about a hundred honeybees for every one mason bee I've actually read it up to 10,000 honeybees which I think is a bit of an exaggeration but basically they are way more effective at pollinating flowers versus honeybees and the reason why is really funny I have to tell you guys so mason bees versus honeybees mason bees the females have um like fur all over their belly. And so they carry pollen in their hands and then they also get it on their belly. And what they do is they go from flower to flower and they're like the clumsy bee. And the, the female mason bee basically belly flops into a flower, which causes the pollen that's already on her belly to come off and get on the other flower that she's on and then she kind of rolls around in it and you know it's just really really clumsy and so they're really really good pollinators um i wrote down the stats just so i don't say it wrong um the the mason bees visit a thousand flowers a day and have a pollination rate of 99 percent so out of all thousand flowers it visits it pollinates almost every single flower that it visits. And that compares to a honeybee that only visits about 700 flowers a day and only pollinates 5% of those flowers. So those are crazy numbers, right? Uh, the mason bee versus the honeybee. So mason bees are really, really good pollinators to have in your garden. And the cool thing is, is that you can actually purchase mason bees and put them in your garden. Um, so let me show you guys uh, the mason bee house that I bought. So here is the uh, bug hotel or the bee house. What do they call it? Star insect house. I got this from Wintour Gardens in Reading. My parents live there. And basically what you need for mason bees, a living, a living space for mason bees, is you need um, eight millimeter tubes like this that are sealed on one end and then they're breathable. And what the female mason bee does is she hatches, um, you know, she develops, she goes to pollinate the thousands of flowers, you know, by, <laughs> by doing her belly flops. And then she comes back in here and she lays her egg and then she seals it with mud and then she dies. And that's basically her life cycle. So it's only like six weeks that she'll, um, that she'll stay alive and then you know uh then it's just her eggs in this one and so what you want to do is you want to have a good spot for her um, and then you can take the eggs out of here at the end of spring like once it starts getting really warm and you can store them in the refrigerator for next year um, so they are fantastic pollinators you can also use this bug house for like leaf cutter bees and different things like that um, which i'm going to look at and see if i can purchase some leaf cutter bees because the mason bees they are early spring pollinators so as soon as the temperature reaches 55 degrees during the day minimum 55 degrees nighttime temperatures don't matter um, they they come out and they pollinate for the six weeks and then after that that's when the leaf cutter bees come out and they do the same thing they're more effective at pollinating than honeybees as well so having one of these pollinator houses in your yard is really really fantastic it helps with um, 
you know, the pollinators uh, in your garden and everything like that. Good, th good for the environment. I've always seen these and I've never actually known what they were for. You know, I knew they were for a certain special kind of bee, but once I actually started doing the research on it, I got really interested in it because just the numbers, you know, 5% uh, of 700 flowers for a honeybee versus 99% of a thousand flowers a day for a mason bee, I just think that those those numbers are crazy. And then the other thing I'll say is that mason bees are apparently really gentle and they don't, they rarely sting. So they're perfect for if you have kids or pets, uh, you, you know, you can show your kids the bees and show them working in the flowers and everything like that and the kids don't really have to be scared of it. So that's just another plus to have mason bees. You know, I just, I, I just think they're really cool. I think they're a fun thing to do. So you guys should look. Um, I will link below a website that has tons of information and uh, on that website you can actually purchase mason bees. But from what I've read, you want to get like local mason bees, you want to get region specific. So you just wanna make sure that you get the right kind. Like I said, I got my bees from Wintour Gardens, which is about two hours away from here. So I still consider that region specific. Um, and I don't know if my local, my local local garden center sells bees. I know they sell like ladybugs and um, I think lacewing larvae, and, you know, and stuff like that. But I've never actually seen bees for sale for there, but I'll have to ask them. Um, so anyway, what you do when you get the mason bees, you actually store them in the refrigerator. Um, so if temperatures are below 55 degrees, like they would be in a fridge, then the bees are in hibernation. So they're in their little cocoon eggs and they're hibernating and they have enough fat stores in there to totally survive. And so then, like I said, once the temperature gets warm enough, you just take the little box out, you open it up, and then the bees will start hatching. And then they'll find their spot um, and, then, and then get to work. So let me show you in the fridge my bees. So I've just been storing them in my fridge, in my little butter drawer. And here they are right here. So they come in this little box. Let me get out of the fridge. They come in this little box and um, on, the, on the box it says, once temps are above 50 degrees or flower bud starts to swell, remove packing material and place open box next to nesting material, which would be this thing. Um, and so there are hatching tubes that you can purchase from that website that I was talking about. Oh, I can't do this with one hand. There are, um, you, you can buy the hatching tubes, but it sounds like you don't really need it. I think if you have a big bird problem, then you might want to get something like that because apparently birds will eat these guys. Um, but I'm just going to slip this right next to it. So it comes with a little packing material. And then there they are. Let me pour them out. So this one came with 10. So you can imagine that's basically equivalent to, I mean, at the, at the low estimate that this is equivalent to, what is that, a uh, 1,000 honeybees. So, and then the other thing is that the mason bees will travel within 300 feet of their home that you, that you make for them. So 100 yards, um, you wanna make sure that you have blooms or at least buds on some flowers within 300 feet of their house or else they're gonna go fly away and they're gonna find more blooms, you know, and then they're gonna build a house there. So you'll, you'll have wasted your money and then you won't get the pollination in your yard. I am getting tons of blooms. I have my daffodils opening. I have my Chinese fringe flower. I have my osteospermum and then I have my anemones. So, uh, and, and plenty more coming. So I have plenty of blooms for them. Um, I don't know how long it takes them to actually hatch. I think it's, it varies, um, you know, over, over a week or two, um, but you know, this week is gonna be so warm, so I'm sure I'm gonna get plenty more flowers. So let's go outside and I'll show you guys where I'm gonna hang it up. Okay, so we're walking over to this side of the house that I've been working on a lot. So let's see, this side of the house faces north. Um, the backyard is the south side of the house, but I don't think we have enough blooms back there yet. So I definitely wanna do it up here. And you can see this is my plumbago bed 
with the Kinsman Garden to tour and the Kinsman Lattice Arch. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put it right there. Won't that be cute? So you wanna have it at least five feet above the ground to keep it away from critters um, and ants and everything like that. And you can see that there's morning sun right here. So I think it'll be just perfect and I think it'll be really cute to have that bee house hanging on that fence right there. I just wanna show you guys real quick the girl's fairy garden. It looks so cute. They did such a good job. And it's so nice to see all the annuals. So I didn't even think about this, but the bees will probably enjoy these as well. Okay, super easy. So this bug hotel, bug house, had a little hook on the back, so that made it really easy. Uh, I feel like I probably should have screwed that in because I felt like I was at risk for splitting that fence, um, but I didn't, so that's good, but lesson learned. So isn't that cute? So the only other thing that you need for mason bees is you need a source of mud because the females, you know, they go around, they spend their life, they pollinate, and then they lay their eggs in the little tubes and then they seal it with mud to protect it from predators. And if there's no mud, um, just like if there's no flowers, they will fly away to find a source of mud. So if you have a lot of clay in your soil and you have access to soil, like there's not a lot of mulch over it, then that's a good source. If you have really sandy soil or if you don't have a lot of clay, then you need to provide some for them. So let me show you. So I have some clay in my soil, but I don't think enough. But more of a problem is, is that all my soil, my dirt is covered with mulch. So the bees, the mason bees aren't gonna have access to any of it anyway. So what you do if you have that issue is you wanna provide them with some mud, some, some clay rich, soil or mud and then you want to dig a vertical hole kind of close to the bee house you want to dig a vertical hole and then pack it with the mud so that they have access to it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the other side of my house where my espalier is and i think that that is um it, i think it's a pretty clay dense uh soil that i have there for some reason it just you know it, it feels really sticky like clay and i'm going to show you guys how to do the ribbon test and what the ribbon test is is how you um, test to see how much clay you have in your soil i am always distracted by flowers but look at my clematis these guys are about ready to bloom i got this as a cutting i mean it was like this big. I got this as a cutting from my neighbor down the street and his have already started to bloom. It gets more sun than mine does. So that should be coming pretty soon as well. I'm sorry, you guys, I get so distracted by flowers. <laughs> okay, let's go to the side of my house. Okay, so we're on the side of my house right now over by the honeysuckle espalier and this soil has, I think the most clay content out of my whole yard. So what you want to do, if you want to test your soil, it's called the ribbon technique. What you do is you take a, you take some of your soil, dig it out, and then you want to add enough water to make a ball. Okay, so I'm just going to add some water. And basically, if you can't make a ball, if the ball falls apart, then um, you have sandy soil and you need to get some clay or some mud for your mason bees. If you can make a ball like that, then you know you do have some sand in your soil. And then what you do is you start pinching it and you're trying to make it into a ribbon and see if it can stick out further than an inch. Kind of like that. So I would say there's an inch. So that indicates that your, your soil is loamy. So that's good enough for mason bees. And then if you can get it to go even further, <laughs> then you have clay. So I would consider this as loamy soil, but it's still gonna be okay for the mason bee. So I'm gonna get a bunch of this, dig a hole over by the mason bee house and pack it in with this soil. And that should be plenty for your mason bees. 
Okay, so we're back over by the bee house and I'm just planning to do the little hole of soil just right here. I feel like this soil would have been plenty clay as well, but might as well, better be safe than sorry. So I'm just cutting back some of this landscape fabric. And then I'm gonna dig a vertical hole, just enough to pack this ball of soil in. It looks exactly the same. I should have just done the ribbon technique with this soil. <laughs> so there's the bee house, and then just below it is where I put the mud, the clay. So um, here is the ball that I got from the side of my house, and then here's the other dry soil that's right here, and it looks pretty much exactly the same. So lesson learned, check the soil that you have closest to your bee house, because it might be fine. Um, so I will put a link below where you can purchase the mud mix, just in case you do have sandy soil, they have a mud mix that you can mix in with it to, um, to make good enough clay for the bees to be happy. Uh, and you don't want to put the clay in like a container like that or some people put it in Tupperware or something like that because then it'll dry out and it needs to be wet enough so that the bees can, you know, take some of it. So um, I'll probably come out here and water it with a watering can just a couple times over the next couple weeks just to make sure that it stays nice and moist um, just because we're getting so hot here. But because you pack it into a vertical hole into the ground, um, then it can suck up moisture from all the other soil in the area and it keeps it moist longer. Hope that makes sense. All right, time to get the bees out. Very exciting. Okay, so it says just to put the open box next to the nesting materials. So I think I'm just gonna put it right here. Um, hopefully it doesn't get too windy. If it does, I might come out and I might like pin that right there so it doesn't fall off or anything like that. But I think that that should be good, you know, and I'll be watching just to see if the birds get interested in it. They're usually not over here. They're usually in my backyard by the, the bird feeders, which are over there. So I kind of doubt that they'll find this, but I will keep an eye out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. It's kind of a fun thing to do, get some pollinators in your garden. Um, and I'll be really excited to watch it. And like I said, I've always kind of wondered, you know, about these, these bee hotels or whatever you want to call it. So it's kind of cool that I have one for my own now. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please consider subscribing and I will see you in another video very soon. Okay, P.S. This is what I decided to do. I came out here. I got worried about them. So I came out here and I put it on its side and then I pinned it in here so it's not going to go anywhere. So I think that'll protect it a little bit more. Um, and then they can hatch and just climb out and then find their little homes. All right, that's it. You guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.